Okay, we got a lot to talk about tonight, I see. Wow, Monday Night Raw, what do, what do I got to say, huh? We, we got, what can I explain? We got what? Orton. We got, um, Baszler to talk about. We got, um, we got to talk about the sermon. Seth was bringing people to church, I see, tonight. Well, then again, it's almost like that every week, but he was more detailed with it. He had a podium. But we got a lot to say about that. Okay, so there's a lot to talk about Monday Night Raw. And a very almost heel crowd uh, tonight, too. A lot of cheering for the heels, I should say. Lots of cheering for the heels. But first, before I do begin this review, if you have not checked it out already, check out my NXT TakeOver Portland review last night. Almost went about an hour doing that review. A lot of things to say about the show last night. Very great show. Fantastic show, I said, um, for TakeOver. But then again, when is TakeOver ever really bad, to be honest? So, if you get a chance, please check out my NXT TakeOver Portland review. But, Monday Night Raw. What do we got to say about Monday Night Raw tonight, huh? Once again, I think it's better than SmackDown. I'll say that. Which, it hasn't been the worst show right now. It's had some decent parts here and there. Still bad in some ways, but a little bit better. But, who do we kick off the show out this week, huh? Everett Washington. We kick it out with Randy Orton. Of course, he gets the big boos and everything. As they went over everything they were going to go over tonight, Randy Orton was actually supposed to be in a no-holds-barred match. But, after what he did to Matt Hardy last week, which they played the whole video of, Orton pretty much says that, you know... The Hardys are known for jumping off the highest of highest things to crashing all the way to the lowest of lows. But as Orton talked, Matt Hardy came out with a neck brace then. Pretty much talking. I didn't Honestly, I didn't know if Matt Hardy's even going to be here tonight. I actually thought he was written off of TV last week. I'm sure everybody did after, you know, Orton took him out. But apparently Matt Hardy is still here, which I have no idea when his contract is up. I'm assuming it's soon. Or next month, I don't know. But as Matt came out, he had a neck brace on. He pretty much talked said instead of talking about you, why don't you explain why you what you did to Edge and take away his second chance? He says, What the hell's wrong with you, Orton? Almost like the same promo last week. Pretty much he told Orton he didn't like it because someone asked you uh, about the whole thing about Edge. And he said that you know, he said that Orton, you try to take my passion away from me, but He's not ready yet. Pretty much says, I will fight on my own accord. You will not end my career. I'll end it when it's my time. So he's still, he's still here to compete with Orton. He knows the doctors won't clear him, but he wants to fight either way. And he says he's a man of his word. And he says he has grit, um, just like Edge, and that Hardy will not die. And he doesn't know what the future holds for him. But he said that Orton does not decide on his terms. Well, Orton pretty much went on to tell Matt, pretty much saying, you know, after what I did to you last week, um, it's probably you still stand on your two feet right now. And Orton got in the ring. Uh, well, Hardy got in the ring. Orton pretty much went on to say that, listen, you know, I don't know. I can just RKO right, right there, right now, where you stand. But he said that Matt had balls. And, you know, you'll never understand... No one ever understand what he did. And he said that he respects Matt Hardy and everything he's done in his business, as he said. He also respects Edge. He loves him like a brother. And he says, I am sorry. He's truly sorry. Orton ended up leaving then because um, he pretty much says, what is Matt really going to do? Come on, you're in a neck brace. You can't really do anything right now. So as Orton left, uh, Orton pretty much stopped for a second, but then he took off his jacket. Matt Hardy ended up going to get a steel chair because he knew he was coming back. Uh, but pretty much when Orton did come back, he walked very slowly. Matt pretty much was ready to swing the chair on him. He did swing it, ducked. Um, Orton got in and took out Matt Hardy, um, pretty much went for his neck. And as Matt kept holding on to his neck, Orton pretty much got him with an RKO in right after that. And then he took the chair and beat him several times. Which the fans, um, I don't know what to say about this crowd tonight. But the crowd actually was turning on Matt Hardy. You could hear people say, one more time, one more time. RKO, let's go. Or Dude, there was like, I'm, and I'm sounding like, uh, whose side are these people on? 
And I know some people were disappointed at that because of the crowd took away from it because they started to cheer Orton in a way. They And, you know, when he kept beating him with the chair and was going to go for the concerto, the referee stopped and the fans actually booed because they actually wanted to see the concerto to Matt Hardy's head. So it's like they wanted him to get beat up, basically. So, uh, so the crowd just kind of turned on him in a way. Don't get me wrong, they did try to show fans shocked and sad and i think they showed some kid crying in the crowd but i kept looking at it, i was like why have fans champ for orton i'm like isn't he the heel here but they want to see him get the crap kicked out of him but when orton did not do it he left and he came back he took the neck brace off of matt's neck then and he dragged him to the outside he knocked over some steel steps and i guess he talked in um orton's uh not talked into matt's ear and next thing you know, he took the chair and everything, just hesitated for a second. But he ended up concertoing him on the steel steps. About two times he did, by the way, before the EMTs finally uh, got to him. As he said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, like I said, four fans were actually, like I said, they were actually cheering Chan Orton say one more time. One more time. So they turned on him. Now, I will say this was a little bit overkill. I actually thought, like, okay, you literally did the same thing last week, but worse. So, I even said, Matt Hardy's got to be written off TV. Now, I know a lot of people say this is pretty much a way to embarrass him because Matt did not sign back with the company. I'm assuming, which I think that's mostly true, but um, he did, you know, he's pretty much not re-signed with WWE. And I think they just want to embarrass him. And basically, people actually told me, so they just want to bury Matt and get the crap kicked out of him. Even though you did it last week, it's like, okay, let's do it three times. It's worse. And I know people were saying, well, where's Jeff Hardy? Dude, when Jeff Hardy's clean, then he can do something. But um, I don't know what Jeff's status is right now, to be honest. And I'm sure people thought Edge is probably going to come out or something from this. But this had to be the way to write out Matt Hardy. I'm assuming it did um, at this point in time because he got beat up last week. You got beat up again. Twice as worse this week, so what What else do you want me to say from this? It was still a really good segment, but it was a little bit the same thing in a way, almost. But like I said, he beat up Matt twice as bad, but at the same time, this was like overkill. And I can maybe agree with some people online saying this may was a way just to embarrass him to finally get rid of him. So I'm assuming this was his write-off this time. I'm really going to assume that because I thought it was last week, but I'm like, oh, Matt Hardy's still here. I thought it was over last week, but I'm assuming maybe this week. Maybe they do get a match next week. I don't know what the status of Matt's contract. Maybe this was the write-off. I have no idea. The only thing I was a little surprised about was when the fans were chanting one more time, one more time. But overall, um, another great segment, mostly one of the best things on the show, is the whole Randy Orton, Edge, and I guess Matt Hardy, for whatever time being, he is still here. So that's probably one of the best things of the night. Next, we got Aleister Black versus Eric Rowan. Honestly, I thought this was about to be a squash match. No, this ended up turning to be a competitive match, which wasn't, in a way, not that bad. But at the same time, it's like, why is Eric Rowan having a competitive match with Alistair Black for now that both of these guys have been killing job guys for a multiple count of months now and and um, now I guess they wanted to put them against each other because Eric Rowan was almost like getting almost the co-main event of the show Monday Night Raw almost every week but we didn't see him but I think what Rowan's in that gauntlet for Blood Money 5 or something maybe they gotta try to push that but Black ended up winning he hit two black masks on um Eric Rowan, we still don't know what's in that cage yet. I'm still saying a ferret, but but um, I'm surprised this was a competitive match, though, which wasn't all that bad, but I'm sitting there like, I'm surprised Black didn't kill him in like under two minutes. This match really needed eight minutes out there, so the crowd looked like he was a little bit into it, though. I will give him that. It wasn't that bad of a crowd. Next, Charlotte Flair came out then. Um, pretty much talked about what she did last night at TakeOver Portland, taking down Ripley. Flair pretty much says that she was impressed, and he says, you want to know why people chant NXT? Because, you know, she helped build the foundation of what is the third brand known as NXT. And it bothers her that the entitlement of, you know, people like Ripley just don't, you know, they don't they don't scratch, they don't claw their way to get where they are to gain the respect that NXT has now. And pretty much took, um, ex you know, exception her showing up on Raw and holding up that title, Thinking she put on the map, but it was Flair who put on the map, as she said. 
pretty much Charlotte went on to say Pratt comes for the fall, and that she's going to humble her at WrestleMania. And everybody was the next big thing. Until they're not, she said woo, and it was over. I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, and you know, I heard this tonight, uh, this girl's face tends to change a lot. I'm sure I'm not going to go into the whole face thing. I think I've said enough about Charlotte's face, because um, at this point in time, I, I could go on the whole plastic surgery or what, whatever. I don't know, man. That girl's face has changed for like almost several times now, but... Um, or maybe some people think it's too much makeup. I, I don't know, but Charlotte the promo, it's it's whatever in a way, but got to hype WrestleMania one way or another, but, it, you know, it does make sense. And, you know, I guess I got to start building up to that. When WrestleMania comes for the NXT Women's title, listen, you, you know, I keep saying this. I would not be, you know, it'd be funny. I, I'm not saying Charlotte's going to win at WrestleMania, but, you know, if she really does, and I feel that may happen, I'm going to laugh for some reason. I do not know why, but I'm going to laugh. But, you know, it's kind of funny. Somebody brought, you know, a lot of people say, like, you know, entitlement and everything. Um, entitlements. I'm sure that's the best choice of words to go with. Entitlement or whatnot. But, like I said, it wasn't a bad promo or anything. But um, I'm sure Ripley's going to have some rebuttal on NXT this Wednesday. But, good promo from Charlotte. I will say that. Next thing you know, the 24-7 title on the line, Redrick Moss, who nobody knows who this guy is, but he is the 24th champion. He has not said anything. Um, he said nothing, basically, in whenever uh, versus Mojo Raleigh versus our troop in a triple threat match. It ended up with um, Moss winning uh, right after. Well, what did he win? Like a roll-up on? Yeah, because what Mojo did it is... Finisher after uh, Troop did all the uh, John Cena moves, five knuckles shuffle and going for an FU. But after Mojo did his finish, Moss pretty much came in, got one of the roll up then, and still retained the title. Mojo looked pissed at Truth. Truth ended up kicking him and hit him with a scissors kick. So, Richard Moss, the guy who is the champion who has not talked, who is literally nobody knows who he is, nobody knows what he's about. He's just holding the belt right there. Mojo, whoever, whatever push I guess a lot of people thought he was getting, yeah, scratch that. This guy's still buried under the ground, okay? Truth kills him again. I actually heard Truth had a new song out, by the way, too. I may go check it out. People was telling me he had some bar. Well, then Truth always had bars, but I actually heard it was um, some good stuff he come, came out with. I know he had some new song out and video on the internet, but I'm going to check that out, though. Uh, next, they also announced the women for the Elimination Chamber match. Whoever wins will face Becky at WrestleMania, which involves Shayna Baszler, Natalia, Asuka, Liv Morgan, Sarah Logan, and Ruby Riot. Okay. Oh, let me let me say something about this about all, all of them in this match real quick. Basically, we know Shane is winning. Okay, we're gonna get into that in a, in soon enough. What what has Sarah Logan done to get a title shot other than lose? And did, haven't we seen Oscar get enough title shots at um Becky? How come Kyrie Sane can't be in the elimination chamber, huh? Because I really question why Liv Morgan, not Liv Morgan, but Sarah Logan, which basically you now have all the Riot Squad, so expect some type of mini Riot Squad reunion to happen in the elimination chamber now. But I'm sitting there wondering, like, what in God's name has Sarah Logan done to get any type of title shot or, or anything? Oscar's had a lot already. Natalia's Natalia, and, you know, Riot just got back, and Logan... Not Logan, but Liv Morgan is there. But I sat there like, Sarah Logan, huh? I've seen nothing this girl do but lose. So what else you want me to say? Next, Mike, R Mike Rome introduced uh, Drew McIntyre. Of course, he will main event WrestleMania. McIntyre came out then, which he's getting more over as a face every week. And with the crowd pretty much saying, you know, things um, just really bigger when you just say those magic words pointing at the sign. And he says, you know what, everybody? We're going to do a Claymore countdown and then point at the sign. So three, two, one. One, boom, points at the WrestleMania sign. And he said that Suplex City is located in Claymore Country. And he said when WrestleMania comes, they're going to invade Suplex, Suplex City, demolish that bitch and to the ground, and he's going to be leaving as the WWE Champion. Paul Heyman showed up there pretty much talking about himself, you know, Brock Lesnar and whatnot. And, you know, he said Brock was going to be here, but nope, he's not here. 
You say you think Brock would be here tonight. He said that Brock is, you know, preparing himself to beat Ricochet at Super Showdown before WrestleMania, then get McIntyre. And before he let McIntyre, says, listen, you can say your client's name, you know, before the match, to lunch, when you're getting manicures together. But listen, when WrestleMania comes, I'm going to take his head off and become the new WWE champion. And Heyman pretty much went on and says, you know, I got respect for you and everything, but I didn't come to Raw to debate you, okay? He says, I'm a huge admirer of you, but um, he says, MVP isn't a big fan of you, okay? Uh, so he pretty much introduced MVP, which MVP came out, and pretty much saying that the issue he has, um, you know, with McIntyre's like, listen, I did the VIP lounge, I just want to invite my old friend to the elite level to VIP, but he says, you know, I'll know this one, all right? And um, pretty much McIntyre said, I kicked your head off and everything. Uh, MVP pretty much said, um, yeah, you hit me with a cheap shot. He said he told the ref to ring the bell. He ended up pretty much attacking McIntyre before the bell. Then he had to play his boot on him. They actually rang the bell. McIntyre got MVP with a boot in after that. They still brawled for a second, but um, he hit MVP with a future shot DDT. Hit him with a Claymore kick, and it was done. Okay, number one, I thought MVP said he was done wrestling on WWE. I swear he said this on Twitter not that long ago, but hey, I guess they pay you today. They paid him more money or they wanted, um, I don't know, maybe he wanted to come back in the ring because I thought that match with Rey Mysterio was the only one-time match. I don't know what MVP's contract right now when it comes to WWE as it is. I thought this was a one-time thing at the Rumble and then the night after Raw, but okay, he's doing the VIP lounge last week. Now he's back in another match this week. Not much of a match, but he's in a match again. McIntyre does still continue to be over with the crowd and whatnot, but you know, I'm I was just surprised MVP was even back in the ring in general. Okay, I thought this was a what he said was his last match in WWE, but hey, dude's still going, so apparently he still wants to keep doing this thing. Next, Becky Lynch came out with a bag. I didn't know what this bag had. Of course, they played what, what was last week um, and everything of, you know, her stealing the ambulance. You know, want to be stone cold right there and whatnot. Not even close, but Becky was in the ring. And she says when she first came to the U.S. to seek her fame and fortune, she figured out that she had no use for fame. And she knew what to do with the fortune. Next thing you know, she had a whole bunch of money in that bag. I wish she would have kicked in the crowd because I wanted a lot of that free money. Uh... Saw some hundreds, saw some dollar bills and whatnot, but she jumped on the ground pretty much saying, this is a down payment, or oh, pretty much that the WWE's gonna find her right now, so here's the money right now, okay, take every penny I got, because she's coming for Shayna Baszler, pretty much saying that animals, they always go for the neck, the weekend, the prey, before they end them, but Becky went on to say, take a long look at the longest women's champ, raw women's champion in history, says, do I look like prey to you? And pretty much talked about, I've went through Natalia, Asuka, Charlotte, Sasha Banks, Rhonda, and um, I'm coming for you too. And um, pretty much right after that, Shayna Baszler showed up on the screen then, pretty much saying like, this is an Elimination Chamber match, right? I'm in a cage. I'm a cage fighter. And listen, it's all laid out perfectly, and I'm going to take your title at WrestleMania. And she's going to chew through her opponents before I get to you. Because uh, she says she's better than everybody. And I didn't plan to bite you last week, okay? But um, you don't know what I got planned. And I'm surprised they're, ne they're not letting them get away with this on TV. But apparently you could say this, that Becky, I'm going to tear the living, sh the living shit out of you. So apparently you can say shit without me and bleep. But, but they let Kevin Owens say it not that long ago on Raw. But then again, I'm like, okay, I guess we can say shit. No one's really stopping anybody nowadays. Uh, but that was pretty much the end of that segment. Basil was good. Becky, I'm seeing more and more people turn on her almost every week. Listen, she's not stone cold. I think I've established that enough. But I can see why people are saying now she's becoming more and more of either A, a wannabe Conor McGregor, or B, just to try hard, or C, once again, a wannabe Stone Cold Steve Austin, okay? You know, the promo was whatever, but more and more, I can understand why people either call her cringe lynch or something like that. It wasn't the, the worst promo, but it does almost feel like she's trying to come off as try hard, like, hey, I got the money, man. Come on, you want to fight? Let's go. Let's do it, man. I'm the longest champion here. I've beaten everybody. And Baszler was not that bad. 
Especially the ending line right there. I'm gonna tear the living the ever living shit out of you, basically. Okay, so that's that's gonna that was a great line to end. Makes makes it look like a badass. Okay, so there you go. But obviously, Shayna Bays is going to win the Elimination Chamber, and we're gonna see her versus Becky at WrestleMania. So expect Becky to lose that title by WrestleMania, cause I see it coming. Cause come on. Baszler almost looks like a killer compared to Becky, okay? Let's be honest here. I know people's going off on the man gimmick and whatnot, but listen, who's the one that looks like the real killer here? Okay, think about that, people. Who looks like a real killer? But, like I said, this segment, though, I would say worked more in Baszler's um, favor than it did with Becky here, to be honest. Next, they went to Bobby Lashley and Lana, who were backstage with Garza and... um. Zelina Vega, pretty much asking about this whole tag match tonight. Lana pretty much says she had this idea for Valentine's Day that it's going to be a Monday night double date, which Vega and, um, you know, Garza look kind of confused for a second. And they said, listen, we're happy for you, but this is strictly a business relationship. Nothing personal, nothing pleasurable. In other words, they looked at each other say, pretty much saying this. We ain't fucking. Okay, so yeah. They not fucking each other, so we we I think we all know where that's going, okay? Garza pretty much told Vega to calm down that she knows how beautiful she is, but this is a business thing that no woman can tie Garza down. I swear this dude just got engaged on NXT not that long ago, but he pretty much says he's a ladies' man, and you know that Rusev and Car Carilo, which uh, we'll get to Rusev in a second, are going to find out that no man can measure up to him. Number one. I have no idea where Rusev has been, to be honest. I really don't. I, I, I forget he's in this whatever gauntlet match at the Blood Money show. But um, this tag match was not bad. I will say that. Um, or what not. Uh, number one, um, like I said, this tag match was okay. It pretty much ended up with Lashley and them getting the win. Garza got the roll-up pin over uh, Rusev. Crowd was actually in this match. I will say that, too. Uh, good back and forth between Rusev and uh, Garza. I did enjoy that, but Garza did end up getting with the roll of tights. Pretty much as he celebrated, Rusev knocked him over the top rope or whatnot. Pretty much putting his hands up. Rusev is still over with the crowd and chanting Rusev Day. I honestly don't remember the last time Rusev was even on TV since this whole... Lashley, Lana, it still kind of continues in a way, but the crowd is still over with Rusev and whatnot, but not a bad tag match, I will say that. Um, Natalia came out, oh boy, which they showed about the kick she had the Oscar from her face from two weeks ago. The Kabuki Warriors came out, Oscar pretty much asked Natalia, if, it says, Natty, Natty, is your eye okay? And are you okay? And are you okay? Natty, are you okay? Are you okay, Natty? I'm not getting in head right now, but Kyrie Sane pretty much said that we don't care. Uh, they laughed then. Asuka pretty much said she's going to beat Natalia at the Elimination Chamber. Uh, honestly, people chanted for Asuka in this match. And a little bit of Kyrie Sane and her dancing throughout this match. I don't even know if I heard a Natty, Natalia chant or whatnot. All I know is that Asuka kicked Natalia to on the outside of the ring. Kyrie Sane got the win. The Kabuki Warriors celebrated and danced then winning a match. Obviously, nobody gives literally two craps about Natalia, basically. I'm sure that's what everybody feels when they see her match all the time because um, they just kind of really either fall asleep or just wait for the other person to win because, uh, trust me, it does get really boring watching an Natalia match. It, it honestly does sometimes, okay? I'll admit that. But, um... Like I said, Kyrie Sane gets the win by countout. I'm assuming it'll be a rematch between Natalia and Asuka next week. But hey, they got they to push towards the Elimination Chamber. I wonder why Kyrie Sane's not in. I don't know. And I'm sure some people are going to say, wait, they're the tag champions and they don't have. Well, not, what teams do they have to defend for those titles? I really want to know. Do you have any women's tag teams? Not really. So they're just holding belts to be holding belts. Ah, uh, but then what, what do we get next, huh? The Sermon. Oh boy, it's time to time to take you to church. The sermon of Seth Rollins. Oh God, here here we go, man. AOP Murphy. We we had a podium in the ring. We had the stained glass image of Seth Rollins, the Monday Night Messiah. We had the purses. Good Lord, this man's taking you to church tonight, folks. Woo. Mmm. Got it. It's time to preach, man. 
Seth came out. They introduced him. He looks like that. I'm sure a lot of people say he looks like that guy from the Far Cry 5 video game that was like some cult leader. But he comes out. He shakes people's hands, giving them his blessing, basically. And he thanked them for the introduction. This was the Monday Night Messiah. And tonight, we're bringing you the sermon. Good, good Lord, we're bringing you the sermon. And yeah, I think we need to add a little bit of effect before we say this sermon. What do I have to say about this sermon, huh? Let's see here. Let's see. Brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, Seth Rollins said. I bring you this sermon tonight. Something's going to be divine. He's talking about progress. And he's going to celebrate progress tonight. We're celebrating the future. Moving in his vision. I was going to say by pra- of a phrase I tell you last week. A fans want the chance. Because a lot of people said you suck. And he wanted to show them the respect that needs to be given. That phase one has been complete. We have vanquished Kevin Owens. We have vanquished Samoa Joe. We have vanquished the Viking Raiders. Whew. That the work begins now. The Monday Night Messiah is here to seek out the weak. You hear a lot of fans chanting, you suck. But he says, brothers and sisters, I understand the confusion. I understand your pain. But phase two is not easy. I'm telling you. For the greater good, we're going to seek out the weak. We're going to seek out the non-complaint. And we're going to fix everything. We must find the flaws in the system. And we must rehabilitate them. Okay? I think I ran out of music right there. But but we're going to rehabilitate them if we can. And eradicate them if we must. Pretty much saying that's not a threat or warning. This comes from the heart. This is the gospel. This is the gospel. He must be Dave Meltzer now because a lot of people think that guy's the gospel too. Maybe it's a shoot. I don't know. But. Man, that's, that's, that's something. But. And I mean but. We must. It's not a threat. It's not a warning. We got to eradicate them. And this comes from the heart, he says. But like I said before, if you go against him, if you try to step to him, you will suffer the same fate as the weak. And pretty much as he kept talking, I'm going to end this music right here. I had a little fun with that, though. It, 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 you have to have an effect to it, man. And, like You just have to play some type of church music when talking about talking about um, just, just, just this segment. Because that would have been the perfect thing to add to it. Because basically, this man is his own religion now. Then again, this isn't the first time we've seen some type of religion wouldn't to do with wrestling. Basically, Seth Rollins is like Brother Devon from back then. Except this time, he does not have a Deacon Batista. Unless you want to count Murphy as the AOP as one of them, too. But next thing you know, the Viking Raiders came out. They pretty much attacked the AOP and attacked Murphy also. They got the upper hand, knocked him out, and Seth got away. Next thing you know, Steve Austin, why did I say Steve Austin? But Kevin Owens came in with a Stone Cold Stunner, stunning stunning him then after that, leaving him on the ground. Kevin Owens pretty much got a big ovation after that for ending Seth's uh, sermon or whatnot. Because I will say Seth got some very, maybe too strong to nuclear heat out there. His fans chanting, you suck. Some people chanting, you, this is boring. Well, this is church. Then again, Unless you're that excited, then you're going to get bored in church a lot. Trust me, I've had myself too. But um, this was a good segment for Seth. And like my friend told me tonight, he says, does Seth do a sermon every week? But I said, hey, this week he had a podium. He had the glass. He had, like, he was the, he was just running his own religion tonight, okay? He looked like he was doing a church sermon tonight. And that's basically what Seth Rollins was doing tonight. But I actually thought this segment was not that bad. I can sure some people are going to say this was goal weight heat for Seth because I already saw some people say that on Twitter tonight. But I actually had a fun time laughing 
at this segment for some reason. It still got good heat, but basically this whole Monday Night Messiah thing is his own cult, and this is how it's working. And I, I want to add something before we move on with this show to this. I just want to say, since we have seen a sermon tonight, I will say before we move on to this review, I'll say this. We come here with the best of these reviews, okay? That we will bring you a review of Blood Money 5. We did bring you a review of TakeOver last night. We will somehow get you a remix to If Bobby Fish Could Fry Fish. Or how does it go again? If Bobby Fish Could Fry Fish? How many, how many fish could Bobby Fish fry if Bobby Fish Could Fry Fish? The remix is coming. And another thing. Fuck Michael Avenatti. That's another thing you gotta add to. Score one for Chicago. Score one for Chicago indefinitely. That motherfucker got his got payback coming to him. But we got the Blood Money 5 review coming. So watch out. Watch out. Just watch out. But hopefully we don't fit enough. Uh, hopefully we don't fit a lot of people doing that. But... Just with that segment tonight, there's a reason why we went a little bit. We would Seth took you to church. I gotta take you to church too, okay? That's how we doing this thing for this show tonight, man. This is the sermon I tells you the sermon. But next thing you know, Seth pretty much was being carried to the back as Chai Caruso showed up. He says, Oh, breaking news, okay, Chuck. Well, Seth Owens and the Viking Raiders wanna fight. We'll see later tonight. I'm sure we're gonna see what goes with this. Next thing you know, the OC came out. AJ Styles making his return. We have not seen AJ Styles since the Royal Rumble. Uh, they came out pretty much of the full, you know, entrance to the OC. And AJ says he was back. Feast your eyes. AJ Styles is back on Monday Night Raw and WrestleMania season. What not, you know, be the same without him. Gals pretty much says, you know, Uncle Allen. It is phenomenal. We can all point the WrestleMania sign right now. AJ said he is Mr. Re- the new Mr. WrestleMania. He's the greatest superstar on the roster of any era. And, you know, the critics want to talk about like, who's winning this gauntlet match. And he says, well, after I win this, he says, who next? Huh? Who am I going to go against? And pretty much says, it could be Brock Lesnar. It could be Drew McIntyre. I don't care who's the WWE champion. It could be Roman Reigns. It could be Ricochet. It could be... Shawn Michaels, it could be The Undertaker, a lot of rumors about that lately, it could be the entire NWO, which they all had to put a two-sweet sign up then, bring them all on, basically, next thing you know, Ricochet comes out, the superhero there, um, AJ Prima says, you know, he was just mentioning you, and whatnot, but Ricochet, you know, all those legends and everything, no one believes he's gonna be the WWE champion, but I earn my title shot, okay? And he's going to beat Brock Lesnar. The OC basically laughed at him then, as Ricochet challenged AJ to a match. He says, whoa, 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 hold on there, cowboy. Carl Cal- Anderson pretty much said that, listen, we're gonna allow AJ Styles on a first match back on Raw against this non-good brother. I'm the strongest guy in the room, AJ said, yeah, this man is the strongest guy in the room, and you're gonna go against him Right now. Where have I seen this match before, huh? Basically, Ricochet versus Carl Anderson. Ricochet won, which looked like a detonation kick, I believe. or a, Yeah, I think it was a detonation kick he won with. Or some type of GTS kick. Uh, it wasn't GTS, but I think it was a detonation kick. But Ricochet ended up uh, beating Carl Anderson, which, come on, who really saw that coming? But I guess they got to make Ricochet somewhat look powerful to face Brock Lesnar at... Um, at Super Showdown, because honestly, no one takes him seriously. I don't think anybody in the crowd takes him seriously of beating Brock Lesnar. And I think now this is almost like a running joke, but now they're trying to do their best to make him not look like a running joke. So they want to do what they can to at least make him somewhat look powerful, but he's not going to win at Super Showdown. We know that as a fact, so there's not even much to say from this. They went to Liv Morgan then, who cut this promo, which I swear she sounds very scripted here, and almost like she's reading word for word. But talk about Ruby Riot. Something about, yes, we were friends and everything. Wanted to celebrate her win, but she tossed the friendship aside like it was nothing. And Liv Morgan said she would have broken that that long ago, but she's not a puppy on a leash. And that and that she's going to take out Ruby Riot at Elimination Chamber 
and eliminate her and be the champion at WrestleMania. Next, uh, same main event or same match you've seen almost 8 to 10 weeks in a row in some type of variation. This week, now it's Kevin Owens and the War Raiders versus AOP and Murphy. Listen, if you've seen one of these tag matches before, just like last week, you've seen it again, okay? One thing I've noticed about Raw tonight is that they really are doing this whole split screen thing nowadays. Then again, what wrestling show is not doing split screen, but Raw wants to do a lot of split screens because I think people complain that there's too much commercials and not enough action. So I guess they want to keep the action on the side of TV or what not why they're on commercial okay but honestly i've seen enough of these tag matches because even i'm wondering like where's this even going at this point because the only difference is this time it's not joe you see a tag match you see a six-man tag match you see an eight-man tag match you see some some variation of this match but it ended up with a dq finish i will say kevin owens is over and the match was over too but seth Rollins came up and out and it was dq they ended up beating up kevin owens and held him up Pretty much talking to Kevin Owens like, we warned you, you tried to crucify me, so now I'm crucifying you. What is this, the Ministry of Darkness now or something? Street Profits music played in as they took now Murphy having him fly. I will say, Murphy was selling out there. I got to give him that, man. He sold that stunner. He sold Dawkins, knocking him almost three feet back. And they pretty much take out the AOP. Viking Raiders got back in the ring. They pretty much stood with the Street Profits as they looked at Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins got out of there then as they pretty much took out AOP and, um, you know, Murphy then, presumably they had him on the ground. Kevin Owens to the stunner on one AOP. And both um, Hanson and Montez Ford. Like, you got to give that man. The man's got mad hops. I got to give Ford one thing, man. That dude be flying high. I mean, very high in the air. So, um... He, he's got some mad hops on him, okay? But pretty much after that, they celebrated. Ford still wants to act like Ultimate Warrior, shaking the rope several times, and that ended the show. Honestly, I guess this is a little bit different now because the Street Profits are involved this time. Don't know where Samoa Joe was this week, but now it's the Street Profits involved in this thing because, honestly, we've seen the same tag match from Seth, AOP, Murphy, Joe, the Raiders, and Kevin Owens for multiple count of weeks and some type of variation for it. Eight man tag six way well, man was last week six man tag tag team some type of way you saw this match and it continues to go will the street profits make a difference in this i have literally no idea all i can say is you're gonna have to wait and see okay but other than that though this is my monday night raw review i am done from here tonight comment subscribe tell me what you think about the show follow me on twitter at hooded night 890 check out any other past videos and check out the nxc takeover portland review okay so more to come along the way during the week so we got a lot planned and like i said we could remix that uh fish thing like i did a little bit last night so we'll have some bars to it we'll see maybe a uh fiesta possibly <laughs> we'll see where this goes just figure out the riddle okay but other than that though i am done with this review check out anything that comes up or hey whatever though but yeah just check out the show okay or the review or just the portland review but i don't know i'm rambling all right but other than that i'm done with this review i'm out of here i'll see you guys later peace out